In this video, I'm going to be talking about nucleic acids, which are more commonly known as DNA and RNA. Both DNA and RNA are similar. RNA is slightly older in evolutionary terms, but, but they are polymers made up of monomers, basically meaning they are chains of something made up of smaller units. What I've drawn down here already is the basic unit of both RNA and DNA. So this is the monomer of DNA and RNA. Lots of these stuck together makes up a larger molecule. And this unit is, is called a nucleotide. It's the same for both, the nucleotide. Both DNA and RNA have this circular thing. The, the shapes are just drawn like this um, for identification. At a higher level, uh, above level three, you need to know the molecular structure of these more, but for this level, this is fine. So this circle here is the phosphate. And the rectangle here is the, the nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base. I need to do that with a minor S's. And this can cut the a nitrogenous base comes in four varieties. But we'll talk about them in a minute. And then you have this um, pentagon shape in the middle. And it's a pentagon because it's a pento sugar. Both DNA and RNA have these, the nitrogenous base and the phosphate, and they both have a pento sugar. However, the pento sugar has a different name in each. So first of all, we'll talk about DNA. So the sugar in DNA is known as Deoxyribo sugar. So deoxyribose sugar. So it's deoxyribo sugar in DNA, and that's where the D comes from. The NA is nucleic acid, as in RNA, but the D is deoxyribose. Okay? So that means the actual name of DNA is, um, I'll find a space somewhere, DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. This looks, this looks like a... Um, an L, but it's not. Let's try and draw a U. Still there. Okay. So DNA, this is the name for DNA. And it's all because of this little sugar. Okay. Hope that makes sense so far. DNA also has this nitrogenous base, and I said before. The nitrogenous base comes in four four varieties. We're still talking about DNA here, and you can have this can be different, and it can be a thing called adenine, or it could be thymine, or it could be guanine, or it could be cytosine. So this base, all this is always the same, the deoxyribose sugar and the phosphate, but this could be any of these. And when you see them written down, the um, identification of which base it is, is depicted by the first letter. So this, for, for argument's sake, would be A, which is adenine. 
Okay, so that's DNA. These go together in certain ways, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So that's DNA. RNA is a little bit different. RNA is older than DNA, so let's talk about RNA. Just has a couple of differences. Take this off as well. So it's not so confusing. So now we're talking about RNA. RNA, the R stands for something, and what it does, it stands for ribose sugar. Deoxy in DNA means there's one less oxygen here on the um, second carbon. So RNA is ribose sugar. Still a pento sugar, but the name of it is the ribose sugar. And it also has T, the thymine, doesn't appear in RNA, it's replaced. And it's replaced by another base called uracil. Which would be the letter U. And they're the major differences between DNA and RNA at the nucleotide level. So I said that this nucleotide is a monomer, and when you stick lots of monomers together, you get a polymer. And this is a polymer. Okay, so this particular one's very tiny and it's made of four um, nucleotides. DNA, DNA and RNA are much longer, but effectively this is the case. The phosphates are joined together and it's that that holds the molecule together. Uh, and this uh, area from here to here is known as the uh, phosphate sugar. This area here is known as the sugar phosphate backbone. Uh, and then you have your nucleotide bases in here. RNA is a single stranded so it's only ever like this but it can be folded in different ways so we'll talk about RNA so you can get different variations of RNA you get uh, messenger RNA uh, ribosomal RNA so anything the first letter is it just goes in the front like this in lowercase you get SI RNA which stands for small interfering RNA transfer RNA there's a few more, but these are the ones you'll come across in level three, some stage. Um, and they have different functions and they're folded different, but basically RNA overall helps the genetic code go from places and, and, and it does something. Okay, so the genetic code, which is embedded with e, these A's, T's, C's and G's, it goes somewhere okay, and it transfers the information by using RNA. So I'll just rub some of this out, we've talked about that. RNA, RNA, RNA. It's only ever single stranded and as I said before the T is replaced by U, so thiamine is replaced by uracil and you're just getting written down along these things here. Okay. That's all I need to say about RNA so far. The other molecule, the most popular one, is DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, DNA is double-stranded. The D doesn't stand for double, remember. It stands for deoxy, but it's double-stranded. So, when I stick another strand here like this, near enough. Now you can. what happens is the bases come together. So this base needs to match that base but it can't at the moment because it's not the right size. It's not the right direction. So what it does, the opposite strand goes in the opposite direction. And this is depicted, uh, sometimes you see things saying a 5 to 3 direction. Well what it means by 5 to 3 direction in DNA is your fifth carbon is here, 
and this is your third cardinal. So the, the direction of travel is going that way, and it's the opposite side here, so that'd be three to five. Okay? And you, you see that when you start doing more about genetic engineering. Now, so it's double stranded, and when you zoom in, when you zoom in, you have these two bases. So we'll, we'll say we've got, we'll go through all of them. A, uh, we'll say C, cytosine, thymine, because it's DNA, and we haven't done G. Okay, and I said that they, they can only match together. So A can only go with T. Cod9 can only go with thymine. C can only go with G. Again here, T can only go with A. And G, which has gone a bit wonky, can only go with C. And they are bonded by hydrogen bonds. Okay, so A and T has two hydrogen bonds, and C and G has three. And that's always the case. When RNA does match up, so this is not double stranded, so if RNA reads this code, it would replace the T with a, a U. Okay, the reason you need to know about these bonds is if you're trying to separate this inside the lab, you need to heat this up. And if there's two bonds, it doesn't take as much heat. And if there's three bonds, it does. See, so that's how that's how they pair together. Let's just take these little things away. Now, this is obviously a smaller molecule, like a, a little example. But what happens is this DNA is stored within the nucleus of the cell, and it's stored in a certain way. So it's very, very tiny. So we'll get this and we'll make it a little bit smaller, like so, okay? So I'll make it even smaller. As you get these nucleotide bases and the, the nucleotides joining up, they start to turn. And this is where you get the double helix from. DNA is double helix. It spins like that. So when you see in like films or in magazines or posters this twisty structure, this black line here that's going down is the sugar phosphate backbone. And the lines that are in the middle that are normally different colours are denoting the nucleotide bases. Okay, so that's how that goes up like that. Okay, and that twists and twists and gets tighter and tighter so they can fit more in. Then this, again, becomes even smaller and this double helix becomes even more squashed. And it then becomes, in fact, I'll make it even smaller. So now it just looks like a, a, a line, really. So what happens here is this line, so this is all the code going on, gets wrapped around the balls of proteins called histones. So I'll draw a couple here. And this histone, these histones allow the um, DNA to be more tightly packed what their job is. And these coils will get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and so on. And then eventually, let's make all this a bit smaller, these tight coils become your chromosome. So each one of these arms is called a chromatid. Okay, this arm is called a chromatid. Okay, and this holds all the DNA uh, for that chromosome, which is a lot. Okay, when you think about 
how tightly that was. I mean, they only had four here, but the human genome's got about 25,000 genes, so it's got millions and millions of bases. Okay, so that's your chromosome. And then you, a human has 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. Sometimes people get confused at 23 pairs, one from your mum, one from your dad. But in total, you have 46 chromosomes. So here's my cell, which is my cell. Okay, and we have our big nucleus in, in this example, just so you can see. And then we have our chromosome. And then this gets compacted. down to one unit and we have one chromosome in there and there'll be another 46 and what all this DNA does and all this that I've stored down here this nucleotide this stores the genetic code so remember RNA transfers the code but DNA stores the code and it stores it all wrapped up very very tiny into structures called chromosomes which are packed inside the cell and the DNA's job is to just sit there holding information and different versions of RNA come along and read the code, transfer the code, and the DNA then will code for a protein. But the DNA itself doesn't make a protein, the RNA takes it to be made. But the DNA just got the information, so it's like a library really. So, just a little recap of the, some of the things that I've said. There's some key differences, DNA and RNA. DNA is very, very long, whereas RNA is relatively short. DNA has a deoxyribose sugar. RNA as the ribose sugar. DNA has the base thymine. RNA has the base uracil instead of thymine. You also have DNA stores the information stores info, RNA transfers the info. DNA is um, self-replicating, it self-replicates, it copies itself, which will be in another video about meiosis and mitosis, this is how this kind of copies itself different um, for different reasons and RNA is synthesized so it's made by another RNA molecule actually but using the code of the DNA so from DNA uh, lastly DNA is stable relatively stable and RNA is not stable Compared, the reason DNA is stable is because it's um, double-stranded. So the 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 code in between, between the nucleotides is um, protected. I hope that makes sense. Just an introduction. You have your nucleotide, your phosphate. You have your pentose sugar, ribose sugar in RNA, deoxyribose in DNA. You have your four different kinds of nitrogenous bases, which code for the molecule. Adenine, thymine in DNA, uracil in RNA, guanine and cytosine, all there make a nucleotide, which is a monomer, which build together to make a polymer, which is right down here, that little thing I showed you before. That all gets twisted into a double helix, wrapped around balls called histones, which all get packed tightly, and you become a chromosome where the information is stored. Thanks, guys.